So I'm gonna go over to the editor and let's do new. And let's say you wanted to make like a little thing in the editor that wasn't gonna be repeating or anything like that. So then we can add it into the scene. So let's just add like a bench. So it might take a little bit longer to model, but we only need one of them or something like that. So I'm gonna go to add, I'm gonna make a box and I'm gonna stretch it out and squash it down a bunch, maybe squash it down a little bit more. And so that looks pretty good. Then let's take our box and clone it to make another box. And this one I'm gonna rotate up like that a little bit and then move it back here like so. And let's actually shrink this guy down a little bit in this direction. Okay, that's pretty good. And then I'm gonna add another box and I'm gonna shrink here and here. And then I'm gonna move it here and down a little bit. Don't need it to be quite so tall. Okay, and move it up. And that's pretty good. And so I'm going to click on that box and clone it one, two, three times. So we'll move one back. And we'll move another one over here. And we'll move one more back here. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, I should have done the materials first so I don't have to uh, change them, but I'm gonna go to mesh basic material because we're not using lights. I'm gonna choose a color for the bench, uh, maybe something kind of brown-ish. And I'll choose another mesh basic material choose another color and that looks fine I'm not gonna spend a ton of time here I wonder if there's a way to copy the materials no I don't see it so again mesh basic material and let's make it kind of brown again okay and actually let's just delete these so I'm gonna uh, delete edit delete Anyway, I'm not spending a ton of time here. I just wanna show if I make something uh, in the editor, um, that doesn't mean that I can't put it into, I can also name these things. It's very confusing that they're all called box. So I could say like uh, bench uh, seat. Okay. So let's clone that, move it back. On that, move it back. Okay, so this is my bench. And so if I wanna actually, you know, put this in my scene that I have on my computer in my code, let's move this forward a little bit. Move this back just a little bit. Okay, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but the point is if you don't wanna have to design your whole scene using code, you can use the editor and design everything. And then you can go to file and export scene. Um, so you can export an object, you can export a geometry, or you can export the entire scene. Um, so I'm gonna go to File, Export Scene, and you can see it created this scene.json file. If I go to Show in Finder, you can see that in my downloads. So I can add that into my project, scene.json. And JSON is something that we haven't covered in class. JavaScript object notation is what JSON uh, stands for. And if we look at it uh, in Sublime, you can see that it's just actually a bunch of data. So there's metadata, geometries, materials, object. And it's, it's nice because it's not a huge file, but it actually has all the information that we need to recreate this scene, including the materials and the position and all this stuff. Um, so it is just a bench, but you of course could add a lot more to this scene. And if you do make like a really like complicated scene, uh, you could make it simpler by adding like a group 
and then putting everything inside of this like group. So then you have this group and you could name the group like a bench. And so that way, you know, it's gonna be a little bit easier to organize your scene. And that'll export to 3JS as well. And so if I wanna add that scene from scene.json into my project, I can use a loader. So if I just go to like the basic loader example, uh, let's see if there's any code. I need to use the object loader. Um, so you can see the code here. Uh, one thing that's a little bit tricky about this code is that it loads asynchronously. So it's like using the preload function in P5. It's gonna load whatever you put inside of it separately from the rest of your code. So if you're animating and the scene hasn't loaded yet, you're not gonna see anything. One way to fix that is to put the animate function inside of what's called the um, onload callback function. The scene that we just made is not very large, but if you had a larger scene, you might have an issue with that. Um, so what we can do is inside of our scene, uh, let's put this down here near our animation. So let's uh, load editor scene. So we would first create the loader to load the scene. So I'm just going to copy that loader gets three dot object loader and we say loader dot load and then the path to the to the scene so it's just scene.json um, you can name it whatever you want and then it takes three optional arguments that are callback functions the onload callback on progress so you can actually see how much is loaded if you have like a really big file and then if you get an error um, so i'm just going to do the onload i'm not going to worry about these two for now because i'm doing something that's pretty simple so i'm going to say on load is my callback function so then function on load and that's going to get an argument of the the scene or object that was loaded you can see here they just call it an obj so i'm just going to call this my bench and i'm going to say uh, scene.add bench Okay, and I'm going to move animate up here so that it doesn't load without the bench. You don't have to do that. It can actually draw your whole scene without the bench to start. But now we see this nice little bench. It's a little bit too big for our scene, so we can change the scale. So I can say uh, bench.scale.set. And I want to use the same value here for X, Y, and Z, otherwise it's going to um, be distorted. So let's say 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay, so now it's a little bit more of a normal size, and then we can position it as well. So we can say bench.position.set. Um, so for the X position, it doesn't really matter, it can stay where it is, but we wanna move it back on the Z. So let's say zero for X. Let's move it up a bit on the Y. So let's try one and see how that looks. And then we'll move it back to like five on the Z. And we got to go the other direction on Z. I keep forgetting that. Okay, now it's probably like in the building somewhere. So let's bring it a little bit closer. Okay, that's starting to look pretty good. It's too high on the Y axis. So let's say 0 0.5. That looks pretty good it's a little bit off the sidewalk but i'm not going to worry too much about that right now and yeah it's actually pretty nice let's move it a little bit back on the sidewalk try 3.2 um, so that's pretty good maybe 3.3 we don't want it to touch the building obviously so anyway just kind of a random example but if you wanted to add something that that you're just using the scene editor to create that way you can actually load it into your scene and publish it you know, on your own project. All right, so I think that's everything for this video. We kind of covered a lot of different stuff, so I'll probably end up breaking this video down into at least two different parts, but I just wanted to go over some of the basics. We have a lot more to talk about when it comes to 3JS, but we'll, we don't have a lot more time this semester, so try to just cover the most important topics. So next we'll do some lighting and materials, and that's actually a quite challenging topic so we'll have a lot to add for that then maybe we'll add something fun at the end like some animation in the scene that's it for this video I'm going to add a link here so let's make a screenshot of this I'm not in uh, p5.js so i don't have like a, a screenshot function so i'm just going to make this window kind of smaller so and actually let's reload it until i can see the bench okay so that's what we'll use for our screenshot and so then let's go to 
Let's close these guys. I'll go to index.html. I'm starting to do my projects in reverse order. So let's copy the last project 2-1 that we did. This will be 3-1. I'm gonna leave thumbnail. And we'll just say 3.js scene is this project. And so then I wanna add my thumbnail in here. So I'm gonna go to downloads. Oh, actually I took a screenshot, so it's gonna be right here. So let's call this thumbnail.png and drop it in there. And so if we go back to the home page, there's our 3.js scene. There it is, pretty cool. The tree is <laughs> right in front of the bench in this case. So um, that's something you could fix programmatically. I'm gonna leave it for now. But yeah, so that's it. I'm gonna go to GitHub and commit that. and push to origin. And so that's it for this video. Let me know if you have questions on email, on Discord, or in class.